Hello everybody and welcome back. In the previous video we prepared our Appster Cradle service and we left it empty. So we added two methods to it but they currently just return null and don't do anything. So we need to change that. We need to add some functionality to this service so that we are actually able to use these methods and that they actually do something. Uh, the first thing that we need to do here is fix a problem that we introduced in a previous video, which maybe you can notice it already that our save class takes in a base DTO and returns a base DTO, which is a problem because if we are trying to save something, we should be able to save the entire DTO. Um, so for example, if we have a later a user DTO, that won't be just a base, that would be additional properties. We need to be able to save that. And in order to say in this abstract service, uh, to save that DTO, we need to use this DTO type that we introduced here. So let's uh, change this. And same here where we are fetching it by the ID. As you can see, now we are having some problems because our Appster Cradle API doesn't know what we want to do. So we have to tell it which types we are going to use. Uh, so we can do something like here entity and we can tell it that uh, this will be a DTO. And that's it. So it solves all of our issues and everything is nice and ready for us to continue. So the first thing uh, that we have to do is add some stuff to our save method. So how it, this will look like. So the, what's the first thing that you need to do that you need actually to save something? You need a repository. So we are going to add our repository here. Uh, we created it in our previous video. So this will be our uh, distributed repository. I think we named it repository, which has an entity and let's just call it repository. Great. Uh, for now, we want to instantiate it, so it will be just uh, empty. We'll later we'll add it to the constructor. Okay, great. So we are saving this. So in order to do that, we have to know a few things. Is this the very first time that we are saving this entity or is it an update? So how can you tell the difference between it? So you have to know somehow on this DTO, is it a new one or not? How would you know? For example, one way to do that is if it's the very first time that a frontend has sent you a DTO and says, please save this, the frontend doesn't know about an ID. So it doesn't generate it. It doesn't have an ID, so that property will be empty. So we can always check that. We can say something like uh, if DTO get ID equals null, our, our uh, DTO is new, which is nice. So this can tell us and then we can do some uh, different stuff. But we, it would be really nice that we can have a, a util method that we don't have to do this part every time. So if we jump to our base DTO, we can add that method here. So it will be a public uh, boolean, where boolean is new. And we'll do exactly the same check as before. So return id equals null. So if the, if the id is null, this means that this DTO is new. Otherwise, this is false and it's not new. So we can do uh, here, DTO is new. Okay, so if the DTO is new, what do we do? Um, and what do we do in the case where it's not new? So we have two cases. We need to somehow, so the problem here is that we don't have an entity. We just have a DTO and our repository, if you see repository.save, uh, it takes in an entity. So it can't take, it can't take uh, just our DTO. So that doesn't work. So we have to add something here. So we have to have an entity. So we can do final entity entity and call it here our uh, okay so it might not be initialized that's correct so how do we how do we handle this um, in the else case where we already have an entity in the database we can just fetch it from there so we can call repository um, find by id and id will be take from the dto so what is it complaining about here 
required type entity provided integer okay so something is wrong in our repository uh, ah, okay so as you can see here we have integer and we have entity which is wrong so we have to replace this and now if we go back to where our um, where we are using it Okay, so for now this is fine. Um, uh, just uh, an explanation, I'm jumping from class to class with the middle mouse button. So if you middle mouse click it, it will just take you to that class, which is really a cool thing in IntelliJ. Uh, okay, so find by ID. Uh, this returns an optional, so we can say something like or else null. And we can add this to, uh, to be our entity. So we have one case covered, but what do we do here? What do we do if our DTO is new? We have to do something like new entity, but this doesn't work. So this obviously can't work. So we have to find a way to initialize this uh, entity. In order to do that, we have to ha know about the, the class that this entity is. So the, what's the class of the entity? So we can do something like private. Um, class entity entity class and now we create a constructor we take in the repository that's okay and now the entity class how do we find it out so we can do something like this equals so there is this uh, generic type resolver that can uh, resolve the the arguments from a from a class so we can do something like uh, i think it's resolve type arguments and what do we have here so what would we would call get class which would return this abstract one and abstract travel service and we can do this and okay this will not ah, okay so this will return a parameter so the list of parameters so oops so we'll have something like params here and our entity class would be params this and we have to cast it so cast it to this uh this is a bit hacky but it works so just ignore it if you can um we can make this final so do you understand what exactly is happening here how are we getting these params and where did they come from so they come from here so these are our parameters we have a parameter here and we have a parameter here and we are taking the first one so the one on the index zero because we have it here if we wanted a class that from this dto we would take one and so on okay Cool, but now what do we do here? How do we initialize our entity? So let's create a helper class here. Let's make it private. And this will return an entity. And let's name it something like init, init entity. And we can do this entity class, a new instance. Great, so it's complaining about something we have to surround it with try catch and we can collapse this and in order we return null. And here we can just return this. So our entity is in entity. And that's it. That's a really nice thing to do. And we are just saving it here. So do you see what we're doing? So we are uh, we have two cases. We have a case where we are updating a DTO when we are, and when we have a case where we are saving the DTO for the first time. So this is the saving for the first time and this is updating. So we can add a comment here. Time and and updating the existing entity. Uh, change to yeah okay um, as you may have noticed now when we call this same method our DTO may contain different properties that our entity that we have here in the database or 
especially this one because this one will be just empty and we're just saving it here so we need to do something about it we need to somehow say uh transfer all of the properties from the dto to the entity so map dto to so this is our next step and we're going to do it that here then we are going to save this entity and then what do we return do we return null or do we actually want to return a dto i would say we want to return a dto so we can do something like get by id and then we need an id and id of the entity let's see what this returns so this returns a saved entity we can do two things here we can Saved entity get ID, so we can get it by the ID, or we can even use our converter just to convert it to DTO. That would be more performant and we would uh, get rid of one database access call, so we can also do that. So, and let's add a to do for ourselves. Convert. Oh, my English is really bad today. Uh, but we are not going to do that in this video, so we are going to do it in the next one. If you have any questions about this, if something is unclear, please do leave a comment on this video and we can talk about it and I can try to explain why I did it and why is it like that. So that's everything for this video. Please do like this, do like it and do subscribe on my channel for some new exciting videos and some new exciting tutorials. And as always, I will see you in the next one.